Hi, right, here we have a video on testing for functional groups. The functional groups we're interested in are uh, the primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols. We need to know how to test for them. Uh, the aldehydes and ketones and the carboxylic acids. They're the ones that we're interested in in this video. And uh, we're going to do that by means of a table. And here's our table. Um, our columns are the homologous series, i.e. those functional groups that we looked at in the previous slide, what reagents we need to do the test, uh, what it would look like before and after the reaction. Okay, so let's, while we're at it, squeeze in alkenes in there, because you will remember that uh, to test for alkenes, we use bromine water because the, uh, the bromine attacks the double bond that is present in alkenes. And bromine water is orange before it's reacted when it's a Br2 molecule. Uh, but after the bromine molecule has reacted with the alkene, uh, you get a halogenoalkane, and that is colourless, right? And the fact that it goes colourless means that you had an alkene. Next, let's do the alcohols. Uh, firstly, the um, primary and secondary alcohols. Uh, so we're doing this one first. And for those, we want to add acidified potassium dichromate which is an oxidizing agent, you remember, um, and it does react with primary and secondary uh, alcohols. Um, before it's reacted, it's orange uh, because the, uh, the chromium is in a six plus oxidation state and that is orange colored. And when it uh, reacts with primary or secondary alcohols, it goes to chromium uh, three plus, which is green in color. Right, so that orange to green colour transition tells you that it's either primary or secondary alcohol. Um, it doesn't tell you which one. But if it doesn't change colour and you do know that it's an alcohol, uh, then you know it's a tertiary alcohol. Okay, moving on to aldehydes. Uh, if you've got an aldehyde there and you can use either tollens or phalanx, uh, tollens is when we're going to uh, get a, a complex including silver one plus ions and they turn into silver atoms in that reaction uh, which coat the uh, walls of the test tube giving you a mirror effect and if that happens then you know you've got an aldehyde and if it doesn't happen uh, it could be a, a ketone if you if you're wondering about whether it was an aldehyde or a ketone. Uh, the failings or Benedict's is a uh, similar test in that um, uh, you start off with a blue solution and that's because you've got copper 2 plus ions in a complex there and those copper 2 plus ions change to copper 1 plus ions uh, and so in that transition they go from blue to sort of orange or brick red you might see that described that sometimes and that's a precipitate that shows that uh, has reacted so aldehydes do react ketones do not react and carboxylic acids so if you have a uh, carboxylic acid as with any acid so it doesn't actually differentiate uh, between uh, carboxylic acids and mineral acids um, you're going to add it to a carbonate for example uh, sodium carbonate and the acid reacts with the carbonate um, the carbonate is quite solid before it's reacted but um, as it's dissolved by the acid, the solid disappears and you get bubbles of gas uh, being involved, which are carbon dioxide. And we can prove that's carbon dioxide by bubbling that gas through lime water because it turns the calcium hydroxide into calcium carbonate, uh, which is a cloudy precipitate. OK, so they're the main tests that uh, we want to um, remember now. Just a quick note on uh, tertiary alcohols. Tertiary alcohols, sometimes you have to um, determine by elimination, i.e. it's not any of the others, so it's a tertiary alcohol. Um, and so now what we can do is we can look at some questions to um, uh, illustrate what you might get in your exam. So here is such a question, and the students investigate the behavior of primary alcohols. Uh, so she first adds primary alcohol to a solution containing potassium dichromate, our oxidizing agent, um, and then refluxes the mixture. If you remember, that means 
that uh, she's going to condense any vapours that come off the reaction mixture um, and let them drip back into the reaction mixture. Uh, so they have more time to react and also you can uh, operate the reaction at a higher temperature. Uh, so what colour change would you expect to see? Well, potassium dichromate 6 is uh, orangey colour and uh, it's going to uh, be reduced and the, it's going to turn into a green colour and so that's what the colour change you want to see. And B, she then adds a spatula of calcium carbonate, so carbonate, that's the test for acids, you remember. Um, now you've refluxed it, all right, so you've gone from your primary alcohol, from your alcohol, you've made it into an aldehyde in, in a first step, and you've gone all the way to a carboxylic acid because you've refluxed. If you wanted to stop it at, uh, at aldehyde, you'd have to uh, distill the aldehyde off before it has the chance to oxidize further into the carboxylic acid. So, um, so from in part A, what we've done is we've, uh, we've changed the primary alcohol all the way into uh, a carboxylic acid. Um, and fair enough, the solution does start to fizz when you've added to the carbonate. And uh, when that gas, that fizz is bubbled through lime water, you would expect, as we saw in the previous slide, uh, the lime water to go cloudy uh, because you're making a calcium carbonate um, precipitate. Okay, that's that one done. Let's um, move on. Okay, here's another question. Students got three test tubes. Um, one's got propanol, aldehyde. One's got propanoic acid, carboxylic acid, and one's got propanol, a ketone. Uh, so it, the question wants us to outline a series of tests the student could carry out to identify which test tube contain, contains which compound, uh, including the details of reagents, conditions and observations. Okay, so what we could do to start with is to... Um, write our three um, compounds down. Propanoic acid and last one propanone. Okay, so now let's say we're going to do uh, test one. So let's say test one, and I won't write this detail down, I'll just talk it through. Uh, so, test one, uh, what we could do is we could take a few drops of each of the samples in a test tube, so you're not using the whole. Uh, whole sample um, and we could put it into let's say Tollens reagent or Phalanx or Benedict's um, and what you would uh, see is the propanol would give a serum, silver mirror for the uh, Tollens or a brick red precipitate uh, for the Phalanx for example um, but no reaction would be seen for the propanone or the propanoic acid so uh, let's call uh, let's call the first test tolerance and uh, propanol. Let's give a positive for that. Propanoic acid is not going to do anything and propanone is not going to do anything. So now we know that um, the identity of one of them, we know which one is, um, is propanol. Next, what we could do is we could take uh, samples of the remaining two unknown um, compounds and we could add to those samples a little spatula of um, solid sodium carbonate, for example. Um, so this one we don't need to do because we already know what that one is, but the propanoic acid would um, fizz and we would identify the carbon dioxide uh, gas by bubbling it through um, lime water, but uh, nothing would happen with the propanone. So let's call this um, the sodium carbonate test stroke. Lime water, um, and if we've done that test, we know which one of the remaining two was propanoic acid, which means the third one uh, must be the propanone. And there we have it. Okay, here's another question. Um, part A is uh, state why war warming samples of a substance with acidified potassium dichromate solution 
is not enough on its own to distinguish whether it is a primary alcohol or a secondary alcohol. Well, that's because, of course, both primary and secondary alcohols are both going to turn potassium dichromate green uh, from its original orange colour. So that doesn't distinguish the primary and secondary alcohols. So that leads us on to part B of the question. Uh, describe an experiment that you would perform to distinguish between the primary and the secondary alcohol. Well, what you could do is um, you could react with react both uh, the primary and the secondary alcohol with the uh, potassium dichromate and you warm it and you do it in the uh, distillation uh, apparatus. When I say warm it, you heat it so that it's going to evaporate off um, and uh, you're going to collect by distillation um, the products for both reactions. So when you do it for the um, primary alcohol and you distill, uh, you're going to get an aldehyde. And when we do it for the secondary uh, alcohol, we're going to get a ketone. Uh, so then we have to do a second test, uh, which would be, let's say, Tollens or Benedict's or um, Failings. Let's write down Failings. You do the failings on both of them. Um, and uh, for the aldehyde that you made, uh, that of course is um, going to uh, turn it brick red. But the ketone would be no change. Right, so once you distill uh, your product off and you do your failings test, if it's brick red, the original alcohol was a primary alcohol. Uh, however, if when you do your failings test on that distilled product, you get no change, then the original alcohol was a secondary alcohol. Okay, here we've got another uh, exam style question. Uh, so this student's got three organic compounds, butanol, an aldehyde, uh, propanoic acid, carbon carboxylic acid, and ethanol, a primary alcohol. Uh, so in three different test tubes, A, B, and C, carries out a series of tests to work out which one's which and records the results as below. Okay, we have to work out which one's which. Okay, so let's, uh, let's we've got an aldehyde, we've got a carboxylic acid, let's just call that CA, and we've got a primary alcohol, let's go like, uh, let's call that primary alcohol, one degree like that. Okay, so let's have a look at the tests. Uh, the easy one is um, the uh, calcium carbonate test here. Um, and with compound C, we get fizzing and cloudy in lime water. So we know that compound C is the carboxylic acid. Uh, then the, if we were doing this really quickly, like it would be in an exam, we'd, we'd, we'd look at this section here, the silver mirror. Uh, means that uh, this one would be our aldehyde. Let's just check the rest. Would you expect it to uh, react with calcium carbonate? No, so that's true. Would you expect it to um, react with potassium dichromate when warmed? Yes, you would, because the aldehyde would be oxidized into a carboxylic acid, and in that process, turn the uh, dichromate from orange to green, so that's good as well. So that confirms uh, the aldehyde, which leaves um, this as being our primary alcohol. Um, would we ex just let's just check it? Would the alcohol turn potassium dichromate uh, orange to green? Yes, it would, because it would get turned into an aldehyde, it would get oxidized into an aldehyde and reduce the chromate from six plus to three plus. Um, would you expect it to react with calcium carbonate? No, uh, so that observation is good for a primary alcohol. And would you expect it to react with, uh, with tolerance when warmed? No, you wouldn't, so that's good for a primary alcohol. So this must be ethanol. Uh, this must be uh, butanol. And this must be a propanoic acid. Like so. Another question here, give the reagents 
and observations for test tube reactions, which could be used to distinguish between the following pairs. Okay, part A is propene and propane. So propene tells us an alkene versus an alkane. So we could use the uh, bromine test for those double bonds in the alkene. And we would see the orange uh, go to uh, colors. And you could do that at room temperature. So that's test A. Test B. Test B, we've got an acid versus an alcohol. Uh, so we would use the uh, carbonate test. We would add a few uh, a spatula of sodium carbonate uh, to both. And one would fizz, the acid would fizz, and we would then uh, bubble the uh, gas through lime water, see it go cloudy. That would confirm that uh, the original uh, compound was ethanoic acid. So let's do, let's just write down sodium carbonate, lime water, at room temperature to uh, summarize that. Both of them. Both in the room temperature. Okay, part C. Here we've got two alcohols. We've got um, two alcohols, as we can see from the endings. So we've got two methyl propan 2 and propan 2 Okay, so if we've got two alcohols, the issue is going to be primary, secondary, tertiary. Okay, so let's work it out which one's which. So let's draw a two methyl propan 2 first. Okay, so Propan is going to tell us it's three carbons. So this is not a carbon, that's a C. So we've got propan is three carbons, like so. 2 ol means we've got a hydroxyl group on the second carbon. 2 methyl means there's also a methyl group on that carbon. And so you can see this here. Let's just turn it green. This here is our alpha carbon. And the alpha carbon is. Uh, bonded to three other carbons, meaning that this is a tertiary carbon, uh, tertiary alcohol rather. Okay, whereas if we um, drew propantool, again we've got three uh, carbons, and again we've got the hydroxyl group off the second uh, carbon, but in this case we have a hydrogen bonded to the alpha carbon. Right, so this again is the alpha carbon and we have a hydrogen bonded to it, uh, but we've got two methyl groups to it, so this is a secondary uh, alcohol. So a secondary alcohol, when you're going to warm it with potassium dichromate, is going to turn into a ketone, which will turn the potassium chromate from orange to green. So there's our test. So we can write that down if we like. We're going to do uh, potassium dichromate. Uh, so we're going to orange to green with propantool. I'll just call propantool that one there like that. Okay, so that's C. Let's have a look at uh, D. And with D, we've got a ketone, which we can tell from the ending, and an aldehyde, which we can tell from that ending there. So if we want to distinguish between an aldehyde and a ketone, we're going to do either Tollens or failings or Benedict's. If we do Tollens, uh, we're going to see a silver mirror with propanol uh, or a red brick from either the uh, failings or the Benedict's. Um, so let's just put tolerance in here. We're going to get a uh, silver mirror with uh, propanol. And nothing with uh, propanol. Okay, there we have it. And that brings us to the end of this um, 
video lesson and we've had a look at uh, what tests and various uh, questions associated for all the different types of alcohols, for aldehydes and ketones and for carboxylic acids. And I think we squeezed in the bromine test for alkenes there as well, didn't we? Okay, hopefully that has been clear.